Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be doing a reading vlog. So I just finished House of Flame and Shadow yesterday and I am just feeling sad, to be honest with you. <laughs> I am feeling an oncoming reading slump and I don't want to allow this to happen. I have just been through one of the best reading experiences of my life, reading the Crescent City series and also reading A Court of Silver Flames over the past like month. And I just finished Flame and, Sha Flame and Shadow yesterday. So that kind of like mini vlog chapter is now over and I just feel lost to be honest. <laughs> I feel heartbroken and sad that I I'm not in the Crescent City world anymore. And like, not only am I sad about that, but like also it's been a really crappy week for me. Like just work has been stressful and overwhelming. It's just been one of those weeks. Like it's just been one of those weeks where nothing's really going right. I literally just got like a massive paper cut on my finger. I freaking bent my book. Like I'm just, I don't know. It's just like one of those weeks where I can't seem to win, you know? It's just one of those days where you just can't seem to win nobody's perfect and i felt like i wanted to do a reading vlog to kind of cheer my spirits up and hopefully ward off the oncoming reading slump quick plug if you haven't seen my reading vlogs for any of the crescent city books yet i literally filmed a vlog for every single one of those books i'm gonna leave the playlist link down below but like oh my god i <laughs> I feel lost. I feel sad. I don't know where to go from here. I just feel like nothing can compare. Like, am I ever going to read a five-star book again? Like, <laughs> that's where we're at. And I just wanted to like start off this video, not on a downer note, but just like a why I'm doing this video. And hopefully this is going to cheer me up throughout this weekend. But also I'm really excited for the books that I'm going to be reading in this video as well. And there's absolutely no possible way I'm going to read all of these books in this video, but I'm, this is like a potential TBR. You know what I mean? First book I'm going to talk about. I'm coming off my Sarah J Mass high. I don't want to leave this behind. I don't want to stop reading Sarah J Mass, so I restarted the Throne of Glass series. <laughs> if you didn't know, I have read uh, up through Queen of Shadows in Throne of Glass. I I've literally done a reading vlog for every single book except Empire Storms, Tyra Dono, Kingdom of Ash. All those reading vlogs will be linked in that playlist down below. It's been two years since I read this book. My sister is currently reading the entire series and she's been asking me a lot of questions about like, oh my gosh, like, can you explain this? Can you explain this? forgot everything. Okay. And coming off of this reading experience from reading Crescent City, I had previously read the first Crescent City book back in like 2021. And I felt like I didn't do justice to that book. That first reading experience I have, I think I didn't understand what I was reading. I missed a lot of what was going on, missed a lot of the characters, like just did not really pay attention to the book. I did definitely pay attention to the book when I first initially read Assassin's Blade and Throne of Glass. And I literally loved these books. I love these books so much. But coming off of that Crescent City reading experience where I literally binge read the entire series, that was incredible. And I have unlocked the joys of binge reading. So now that I have come into the light and like seen how beautiful binge reading a book series is, is I want to restart. Okay, I want to do over. And I'm not going to be redoing the vlogs for Assassin's Blade to Queen of Shadows. I will be doing a separate Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash vlog, but I'm just gonna be like casually reading these over the next few weeks until I get up to Empire of Storms when I'm gonna be filming, filming an entire reading vlog for that. I want to refresh my memory. I want to jump back into this world. I don't wanna like end my Sarah J Maas era right now. So I started the Assassin's Blade last night. I'm probably like 40 pages in or so. Um, um, and this is honestly all I want to read this weekend. <laughs> Throne of Glass follows Selena Sardothian. She is an assassin for this like assassin lord or whatever. And you just like follow her adventures. And it's like this new adult fantasy series. It's so good. It's Sarah J Maas. It's, I don't even feel like I have to explain it. It's 10 out of 10. And I haven't finished the series yet. So I'm just so excited to get back into the series and actually like finish it off and finally read the whole thing. Honestly, that is what my mood calls for. Like Throne of Glass is what I want to be reading right now. And I do have the audiobook for that too. So I'm probably just going to be reading that like casually throughout the weekend. Um, the other two books on my TBR, the first one I'm actually going to be reading as well because I have a book club next Friday. So I have one week to read this book. 
book is Serpent in the Wings of Night. This is the first book in the uh, Crowns of Nyaxia series by Carissa Broadwent. I have heard nothing but great things about this series. Everyone on booktube loves this. I think it's about vampires, but I have a book club that like some of my friends and family do and it's like kind of a fantasy romance book club. And this was the book that we picked for our book club and we are meeting next Friday, so I have to read this. I just don't know how I cannot read Sarah J Mass right now, to be honest with you. I will be reading Serpent in the Wings of Night though sometime this week. And then the third book um, that has been potential on my TBR for quite a while that I think would help me get out of a reading slump if I started to fall into one more is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I know I've talked about this book so many times. It's not very long and it's a very, very fast read. Like it's just pace is on point like literally you never get bored so i feel like if i start to fall into a reading slump this could be a really good option and i almost feel like this is a book that i'm like disappointed in myself that i haven't read yet because i have a feeling when i read it it's going to be a five stars you know honestly i'm stoked for this tbr i feel like every single one of these has a potential to be a five star heard so many great things about this also same with red rising and i'm just really excited literally it's friday afternoon right now i have no plans this weekend i want to make a marinara sauce and meatballs and that's what i do I've never made a homemade marinara sauce before. So at some point this weekend, that's on the sketch. But other than that, it is a restore and reset weekend. We're going to just be like resetting the mind, body, soul. I have some yoga classes booked. I just like need this for my life. And I don't know if it's just like, it's super freaking cold outside right now, but it's just been a really shitty week. My mental health is not great. I am super, super anxious. So all I wanna do is just like do self-care. Like I wanna do a face mask tonight. I wanna just like take care of myself and take care of my mental health and like not feel stressed out this weekend, you know? But first things first, First, my library closes in 50 minutes and I have a book that is in the library. So I wanted to go pick that up, pick up the book and maybe walk around and see kind of what my library has in stock. So let's go do that. And then let's just get to reading tonight. All right. See you in the next clip. Bye. Let's do it. I only got two books. I kind of browsed a little bit, but I had one book come in that I did, like totally forgot I put a hold on. And that is Family Meal by Brian Washington. This book was on my TBR Tinder, my winter TBR Tinder. And honestly, I don't remember what it's about. But what I do remember is that Brian Washington wrote the book Memorial, which I think was really well liked. Oh, this is sad. Cam is living in Los Angeles, falling apart after the love of his life died. The ghost won't leave Cam alone. Yeah, that sounds really sad. It sounds like someone dies and then they're trying to like be okay again and cope with the grief of that. Okay, I don't think that's the book for this weekend. <laughs> Um, the other book I got, cause I was just kind of perusing. Also, I love my library. My library is so cute. It's like brick and it has all this stained glass and it's beautiful and it has these beautiful overhead lights. It literally looks like this like old timey Harry Potter type style. It's just so freaking cute. Why don't I go there more? I need to take advantage of the library more. Like, I think that should be a New Year's resolution for me. The second book I got was uh, The Illuminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I don't know what this is about. I've like heard buzz about it on booktube for a while. Like, I feel like when I first watched booktube, like, five or six years ago or something people really liked this book and when i was reading the back it sounds really interesting so it sounds like these two corporations are at war over a small planet and then one of the main characters hacks into data into like a data server and has like all this evidence about something i really honestly i don't know but the thing that i found most intriguing was that it's like mixed media like it's not just words on a page. It's, look at that. Like it's like text messages and emails and files and like, what? Look at that. It just looks like this is a book you would be able to not put down at all because it's constantly changing and there's constantly something new for you to look at. What? I don't know. This looks really interesting. And one of my friends, Hannah, from Hannah's Recent Reads and Cammie, 
also said that they really liked this book. So I don't know, we'll see. I mean, literally worst case scenario, if I don't like it, I just return it. Like. That's the beauty about the library. Um, so cute little mini library haul. I love the library, okay? I need to take advantage of the library more. The fact that these are just free, like my library is literally free. I love it, it's amazing. The other thing I wanted to open, I did get a package. I'm participating in Realmathon, which is a readathon that's hosted by Cassidy from um, Covers with Cassidy. One of my favorite readathons of the year, if not my favorite readathon of the year. I don't think I have another one that I enjoy e even quite this much. It's a fantasy based readathon where it's like you have teams competing against each other. It's so much fun every single year. There's constant live sprints. It's so fun and I love it. And this year it's like a school theme and she put out merch for it and I was like, I have to get the merch. I also just like want to get more reading slash booktube merch. I just feel like it's fun and I want to support my friends and like the people on this platform. And so I got a sweatshirt. So I want to open it and show you what it looks like. So the theme this year, like I said, it's like an academy. It's called Judicium Academy. And oh, I love this color. I got the green sweatshirt, so it says Judicium Academy on the front, and then it has the logo on the back. Oh my god! It's so cute! Oh my god, I'm so excited, I'm so excited. I also got the bookmarks too because I couldn't help myself. I literally couldn't help myself, I was so excited. And so I just, like, I got it all, okay? Um, I, I don't know when my bookmarks are coming in, but I'm super stoked about this. I'm gonna put it on. Love it. This is so cute and it's so cozy too. Great job, Cassidy. I'm in love, I'm in love. I can't wait to literally wear this all month next month and it fits really nice too. Okay, cool. Well, that was a cute little haul. Now I'm just gonna read. I'm gonna read Assassin's Blade. I gotta be honest with you. I don't want to read anything else but Sarah J Mass right now and it's just what my soul is calling me to do. So that's, that's gonna be my night. I'm gonna read and I'm just gonna take care of my soul. I'm gonna make some tea. This is gonna cure me. I'm not even kidding you. My soul needs Sarah J Mass right now. <laughs> okay, bye. a check-in. So I am just about done with the second novella in Assassin's Blade. I'm probably right around page 110 right now. So I've read like that much um, since last night. We ended up making some pizza and then we watched uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is like Donald Glover's new show. It's a playoff of like the old Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. It's pretty good. Um, it's about like these two assassins. It's, or I don't even know if they're, no, they're not assassins, they're spies, but it's kind of interesting, whatever. That was what we did last night. And then this morning, got up, went to hot yoga, which was brutal. I almost passed out. I went to a new class or a new class type today. Normally I go to a hot yoga that's like a little bit slower, a little bit like longer stretches. This one was more just like vinyasa flow. Like they, the instructor kind of like takes you through a few different sequences and then lets you just like do whatever you want for like 20 minutes, which was very strange. And I'm not used to that format because when I'm really like, in the moment and working out and whatever, not thinking about what I'm doing, you know? I got a great workout though. I was sweat, like my whole body was in sweats in a good way. I don't know, I got a really great workout this morning, felt great, had a protein shake, showered, and I finally have figured out how to style my bangs, which is awesome. But reading, checking them about 100 pages in on Assassin's Blade, it's just so good. It's just so, so good. I'm so happy to be back in this world and I'm like really glad that I restarted it because I just forget everything. I literally don't remember things at all. And I read this book two years ago and I don't remember a lot 
lot of the things that I feel like I should be remembering if I were to start and pick up with Empire of Storms right now. But yeah, it's just, it, it's everything. Sarah J Mass is everything. I am so lucky to be alive at the time that she is alive. Okay, cool. I will be starting Serpent in the Wings of Night because literally everyone in my book club has already read it, except me. So I need to get going. I was talking to someone in our book club and she, she said she read it in one day. So I have high hopes that I'm gonna be able to fly through this book this weekend. I am like super, super excited about it. Um, and I mean, I know it has so much hype on booktube. Like how could I not like it? Like. I feel like I'm going to. But yeah, don't know what this is about. I'm going to be starting this next. I think it's about vampires. I know it's a fantasy romance. Soup's excited. Other plans for the rest of the day. I mean, I got my workout in, which was great. Honestly, me and Reed are just like, gonna be hanging out. Like it's really cold outside right now. And I'm just like thoroughly enjoying this kind of slow time of the year right now. Like the slow hibernation part of the year. I literally have no plans until April. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no plans. I mean, we're gonna go to like a concert here or there, but like I am free as a bird and I'm just allowing myself to really enjoy this time to allow myself to read and kind of like hibernate and just be cozy and warm. I don't know, I'm really enjoying this time and just like enjoying doing yoga on the weekends, kind of resetting my mental health and just kind of like enjoying this time of year. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like this time has been very restorative to me and kind of just helped me reset in my mental health and just, I don't know, just everything. It just feels very needed right now and I'm just really enjoying it. So I'm gonna get to reading. I will check in with you guys later once I actually know what Serpent in the Wings at Night is about, but I have to like upload some footage onto my computer and I don't know, just like do random stuff around the house. So I'll check in with you guys later. Bye. Hi, it's Sunday morning. Guys, I have been like so <laughs> ADHD. Um, I'm just like real, no attention span at this moment, real ADHD. But uh, I just need to tell you uh, what I did this morning. First of all, I'm on chapter, literally I'm on chapter two. I have no attention span to read a book right now, which is very unfortunate because I literally have to read this today and it's one o'clock and I need, I need to read this. <laughs> I can't go to a book club and not have read this. I did that with the last book. Actually, no, I tried to read the last book. The last book we chose was Icebreaker. Genuinely, I read I read 20% of it or like, I don't know. I think I read to page like 80, hated it. I hated that book and then I DNF'd it. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna finish it. And I don't feel bad about that. And everyone at the book club like didn't care at all. No, I genuinely wanna read this book because I like it. I, I just started it and I like it. There's like a competition factor to it. Basically, this girl is a human in a world of vampires. I'm literally on chapter two, but it sounds like there's a competition. She was raised by a king. Like she was picked up as an orphan, as a child by the king, but she's like a human in this world of vampires. And I don't know, she gets entered into a competition, but I love a competition setting. I love a competition trope. I don't know what kind of romance it is. Like, is it an enemies to lovers? Is it what, like, I'm guessing it's enemies to lovers because obviously she's probably enemies with the vampires, but whatever. 
So I do need to get going with that. But I had my attention taken by a hyperfixation this morning. Um, I was just like on my YouTube homepage this morning and I came across, do you guys know who Elise Myers is? She's like a content creator. She was, she was a TikToker or is a TikToker. I'm not sure, but she is like, she just, I don't know. She's just like a Gen Z millennial woman who is relatable. And she has gotten really into crocheting and she uploaded a tutorial on her YouTube channel of how to crochet like a granny square. And so I'm learning how to do that. And I went to Joanne Fabrics this morning and I got some yarn. I did get my yarn at Joanne's to make a little granny square. So I started and I'm actually really proud of myself. I knew how to crochet when I was little. My grandma taught me, but I never knew how to like follow a pattern or do anything like that. So I'm literally following her tutorial and like going to make my own little granny square. And I want, I'm just excited to see how it turns out. That's been my morning is hyper fixating on crocheting, attempting to read and failing. And then the other part of my morning has been watching Katie Colson's booktube's best books of 2023. Katie Colson, you are incredible. Like I literally have no words for the dedication, the hard work that she has put into that video. If you didn't know, Katie Colson, our queen, our personality queen. In 2022, she made a booktube's best books of 2022 video. It was phenomenal. And then she re recreated it for this year. So basically she went through and watched over 700 videos, literally over 700 videos of booktube's best books of 2023, compiled them all into one big video. And it's basically like a big recommendations list. And I watched it this morning it is so good like i literally can't recommend this video enough this is my roman empire this video deserves an oscar like can we get her nominated people the academy where are you at watching it this morning just made me realize how into the fantasy fantasy romance niche my feed and my like content is i was watching it and like literally 90 percent of the books on that list are all like mystery thriller or romance or contemporary romance oh my which i like don't read those genres but i can't believe I just like it was making me realize like how tunnel vision my YouTube feed is <laughs> which I don't hate it because like I mean this is my niche I love fantasy and fantasy romance and like I love watching people talk about fantasy and fantasy romance it's obviously my biggest interest in reading but at the same time I was like dang I don't I, I need to open up my blinders I need to like check out some of these other content creators. It made me inspired to do some reading vlogs focusing on some of those books that she mentioned. Like I think it'd be fun to do um, a mystery thriller one because some of those mystery thrillers sounded so intriguing. Um, and then I also sparked my interest to maybe do a contemporary romance one. There were like two books on there that I really that I actually own and have been really interested in reading. So maybe I'll do one of those. I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested, but I feel like that video just made me so inspired um, for like potential video ideas in the future. And it also allowed me to find a bunch of new creators that like the algorithm has never served up to me before because I'm clearly into this fantasy, fantasy romance niche, like real hard. All the accolades to Katie Colson. You are a freaking star. You deserve every gold medal. I wish I could ship you a trophy or something like that for that video because you're incredible, truly. But yeah, if you don't follow Katie or if you haven't watched this video, I'm going to leave it down below in the in the description because it's seriously, it's booktube gold. Like that is the video of booktube. If you want only watch one video from booktube this year, make it that one for real. Okay. All right. Well, that's my check-in. I need to read. I need to read today. It's literally one o'clock. I am wasting my day not reading and I need to do that. Okay. I'm going to go. I'll check in with you later. Bye. <laughs> Back in this little jump bar today. So 
So I initially was going to make this a weekend reading vlog, um, just covering what I read last weekend. But considering I didn't read a lot over the last weekend, and I've just started to get into Serpent of the Wings of Night and I'm like really picking up speed with that. I'm just making it into a weekly vlog and obviously you saw that by the title, but I'm just kind of like saying this for my own personal like marking as we are now doing a weekly, a weekly reading vlog. Okay, cool. Also, I'm doing like a lot of bookish things in my life and I don't want to not take you along on the journey. Also, today is Monday, February 19th. Yay. Quick touch point on my reading thus far. Number one, I read to page 50 last night in Serpent in the Wings of Night. Loving it. Okay, this book, why haven't I heard it marketed as Hunger Games mixed with Twilight? Because that's what it is. I feel like I'm just now realizing how much I love the Hunger Games style of plotline, like where it's a competition type of thing. Oh my gosh, it does something to my brain. Like it does something to me where I just can't stop reading. I can't put it down. And you know that the main character is likely going to make it because like obviously they're the main character, but there is something about a competition that just gets me going. I don't know what it is. So let me quick explain the plot of this other than it's a Hunger Games mixed with Twilight. Literally, that's the plot, okay? We have our female protagonist. Her name's Oraya. As she's gotten older, the king has trained her for this once in a century competition and the winner of the competition gets granted one wish by the goddess Nyaxia who is the goddess who looks over this entire land. The goddess will grant you literally any wish you want and her adopted father's wish is to inherit his powers and inherit his bloodline. Basically she would be turned into a vampire and inherit his powers and stuff and she's very vulnerable entering into this competition because a lot of people in the competition are vampires so it's like her odds are against her like very much against her but like you know we love a main character who defies odds. I am loving this. I'm 50 pages in. We are off to a great start. We are off to the races. Like there is not a dull moment already. I'm very, very intrigued. I, I'm really, really liking the writing style though. I feel like it's quite descriptive and I feel like she is using phrases and terminology that I feel like you don't come across quite often. I don't know. It's just like kind of more, I don't want to say lyrical, but it's, it's, it's more prose like, I feel like. It's very nice writing though. I do enjoy it. I'm really, really liking this. I think this has five star potential, honestly. You know what? Am I rating every book five stars I read this year? Maybe, but I would consider that a great reading year then. <laughs> okay, so loving this. That's where I'm at. I need to finish this ASAP because book club is on Friday. Second thing. Assassin's Blade. I am, I don't know, I'm about halfway through. There's really nothing to report on this. Like I've already read this before. It's just great to be in this world again. I honestly don't feel like I had to reread this book to remember everything going into Empire of Storms, but why not? I might as well, if I'm doing the reread, I might as well do it right. You know what I mean? Um, so really nothing to report. I don't feel like I have anything to say on this, honestly, but I mean, enjoying it. The thing that I wanna talk about though, the thing that is on my mind is my crocheting, okay? I am thoroughly hyper fixating. I can't like things normally. It's honestly a disease. I don't even want to talk about it, but I'm going to make a genre blanket. Okay. I'm going to make a genre blanket. Um, I never thought I would be the one to do this, but I always feel like it looked really fun, but I was like, there's no way I could actually commit to doing a craft for that long, but I'm going to do it. Michael's had a great little sale today on yarn. So I went after work and I got a bunch of different yarn and it was all $30. Like I am psyched about this. Literally in the last 24 hours, I have just like deep dived into the crocheting world. Like I have found crochet tubers. I don't like, I don't even, <laughs> I told you, I can't like things normally. Okay. Did I map out what genres I read? No. Did I take into consideration any of my reading habits? No. We are just gonna do this on the fly with a little bit of a pattern and I'm gonna call it good. But I wanna show you the, the yarn that I got and what I'm thinking in my little noggin. I went to Michael's, I got this loops and thread impeccable acrylic yarn. They had a lot of different colors and it was cheap and that's why I chose it. So my only thing that I've thought about of what genre I wanna go with what yarn is that this is gonna be fantasy romance, okay? This is gonna be fantasy romance. I've thought about maybe should I do a color for Sarah J Mass specifically because I'm doing a big Sarah J Mass reread. I haven't decided that yet, but I think the genres I need to come up with are fantasy romance, 
fantasy, literary fiction, or like general fiction, I do want to do a little mystery thriller vlog this year. So mystery thriller, nonfiction, and like maybe middle graders. I don't know. Honestly, I think I got too many colors. I was just, I kind of went just ham. Other colors I got, I got a cute blue one, and then I got a mustard yellow, then I got a dark blue, and tan. Honestly, I think I got way too many colors. I got this, this one's like my favorite. It's like this like warm brown. It's so beautiful. And the last one I got was this beige color too. So honestly, I'm sure that if I want to add a color or something, I can just like go online and get this yarn too. But like, I'm just in love. Like, look at all these colors put together. I'm probably crushing my microphone. Isn't it so pretty? Look, they're so cute. So yeah, that's my uh, crafting project. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go and crochet because that's all I've wanted to do all day. And I'm gonna listen to Assassin's Blade. I hope you guys are enjoying the vlog. I'm happy I'm turning it into a weekly reading vlog because that's what my soul needs right now. Love you, see you in the next clip, bye. Hi, okay, blanket update. I am trying to plan the blanket out right now. Figured out the stitch I'm going to use is called like the linen stitch or something. I don't know, I found it on someone's like blog or their YouTube channel. And I think this looks really pretty and I kind of like how it's more like it almost is like a tighter stitch. So like, I don't know. I just feel like it looks a little bit more durable. I don't if that makes any sense. It just looks like it's, if I'm going to wrap myself up in a blanket and read, I want something that's a, like, there's not so many holes in it. So I'm not cold. Does that make sense? This feels like it's a tighter stitch and I'm going to be warm when I'm using the blanket. I have all my colors spread out here. So I'm going to be doing it in stripes and I've estimated how big I want the blanket to be. So I'm, I'm going a big blanket. I think the blanket's gonna be 60 inches wide, which is huge. I think that it's like 10 inches longer than this blanket. And then it's going to be about 1.6 inches in length per book which will end up being around 80 inches in length. That's kind of what I'm planning in my head. Um, I have to decide my colors here. Let me show you. I have all the colors laid out on the ground. There's all my colors, not the orangish color up here. We're not using that color. We're only using these ones. I think the dilemma comes in the sense that I was thinking about using the red over there the second one to be the fantasy romance color. The only thing is, is I have a feeling I'm gonna read a lot of fantasy romance this year. That means that the blanket is gonna be mostly red, you know? I really like the beige colors. So I feel like I need to have a book that is a book genre that is like, I'm going to read more often to be one of the beige colors, whether that's fantasy or literary fiction. Maybe I'll do it literary fiction. I don't know. The other thing, um, I already read a nonfiction book this year, so I have to pick a genre for nonfiction. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe this like blue color because it's not my favorite color or maybe the mustard yellow. I'm not sure. This is probably going to be the hardest part is picking which colors go with which book genres. I should probably look at my statistics over the last few years to figure out which genres I've read the most of. So yeah, that's my biggest dilemma right now is trying to figure out what genres I want to go with what colors. And also I have a feeling I want to read more genres outside of my comfort zone this year too, but I can't start the blanket without picking at least the nonfiction and the fantasy romance genres because those are the books I've already read. I don't know, I have a feeling I'm gonna get stuck on this. Okay, I think what I need to do is come up with a list of the most common genres I read and then figure out what color I want the main color of the blanket to be. I honestly love this color. I love, love this color. So I feel like if it's red, I'm not going to be mad. And I just, this feels fantasy romance. Like this maroon is fantasy romance. <laughs> I need to think about it. And then I also probably have to go to bed soon, which means I'm going to read a little bit more tonight of Serpent in the Wings of Night. So peace. Bye. Hey, vlog update. Okay. Guys, uh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, first of all, it is Tuesday today. I just got off of work. I'm hyper fixating so hard, so hard on this blanket. Okay, all I wanna do is construct this blanket. First of all, we need to talk about reading. I haven't read anything since my last update because I literally went to bed and then went to work in the morning. In an act of pure desperation, because I now have pretty much three days until a uh, book club, I found the audiobook of Serpent in the Wings of Night on Audible, AKA I have to use a credit because it's an Audible exclusive. And out of desperation of not being able to finish this book in time and only wanting to crochet, hence not physically reading, I downloaded the audiobook and I spent a credit. 
you know what? One of life's greatest luxuries is to be able to physically read and listen to a book at the same time. I don't know. It does something to my brain. It makes me so happy. I love it. It is one of my favorite ways to read a book. Um, and I listened to the brief little sampler with the narrator who I did really like. I think if I just like straight up listen to the audiobook for the next three days, I'm gonna be able to finish it. It's 15 hours long. So on 1.4 speed, which is what I listen to, I have 10 hours left. So I can defo get that done by Friday because I'm probably gonna spend 10 hours crocheting. Blanket update, okay? This is what I wanna talk about. This is all I wanna talk about. So I found a pattern, okay? But I got two other colors just in case. So I decided a few things. First of all, this is gonna be fantasy romance, okay? But the thing is, is I think I'm gonna read a lot of fantasy romance throughout the year, so I wanna mix it up by putting a little pink in too. And what I thought about doing for the books that I read Sarah J Mass on, because I feel like this is gonna be my year of Sarah J Mass, is I want to alternate the colors. And I think I can find like a pattern of how to alternate this, this stitch, like alternating red and pink. I think that would be really pretty and cute. This is gonna be fantasy romance. Um, and then combine the two is gonna be Sarah J Mass, and then pink only is going to be romance, just like general contemporary romance. I decided I'm going to do like a border on the outside, and I'm going to use, oh, I can't decide one of these two threads. I was kind of thinking the lighter thread as the border, and then each month, I'm going to crochet a row across so I can tell. I wanna be able to have points at where you can see, okay, this was January, this was February, this was March, do you know what I mean? So I think I'm gonna do the, this color as the border and then also it will delineate a start of a new month. I hope that makes sense. Other things I was going to do. So if I do, this one is going, if this is the border, I was going to use this like taupe color to be nonfiction. Not that nonfiction is boring, but. <laughs> You know what I mean, okay? I wanted to do this color for fantasy because I feel like fantasy and fantasy romance are my top two genres typically. So I feel like alternating, like these these are the, gonna be the colors that are gonna be used most throughout the blanket. So I felt like the two of them together looked really nice. And if I have the blanket mostly in these colors, I think I'm gonna like it a lot. I was kind of looking last night on like different people's genre blankets and stuff. And one of the recommendations was like, hey, make sure the color that you pick for your most read genre is a color you actually like because that's the color the blanket's gonna be, you know? So I really do like these two together. I feel like it's kind of like a fall vibe. And then the other colors are gonna complement them pretty nicely. Th those are my ideas. The first thing I have to do is crochet the books that I've already done. I've read a nonfiction and then I've read four Sarah J Mass books. I don't know, you guys, I'm so psyched about this. Like you have no, you have no idea how freaking psyched I am. I'm gonna get going. I'm gonna be listening to Serpent in the Wings of Night tonight and I'm gonna be crocheting the rest of the evening. This is my only plan. I already worked out this morning, feeling great, went to yoga, it was awesome and I've just been looking forward to crocheting all day. So I hope you guys are enjoying the vlog. If anyone has any tips about crocheting in general, just leave them in the comments, okay? Would love to know some resources or thoughts that you have or starter projects or just any kind of insider info you have. Would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you in the next clip. Hi, um, literally it's one hour later since my last update, but um, I decided I went to Michael's for a third time in the last two days because I'm, I switched some colors. I took back a few colors and I got some different ones. But also, more importantly, I tried to listen to this audiobook for Serpent in the Wings of Night. The narrator has a very harsh American accent and I hate it. I hate it. I may be doing an over-dramatized version of how this narrator sounds to me, but like this is how it sounds in my head. Absent-mindedly, I rubbed it. Not even that tiny movement escaped Vincent's attention. I would have found them for you if I could, he said. I hope you understand that. A pang rang out in my chest. I didn't like to openly acknowledge my own hopes. Like it's a harsh American accent and it is nothing like I pictured this character being and it is actively destroying my enjoyment of this book. So hence, I think I need to return this and I think I need to read this book physically with my own two eyes. Now, is that gonna be a problem because all I wanna do is crochet? Absolutely it is. I am in a pickle. First of all, I'm gonna try and see if I can return the audiobook. I think you can on Audible, but I, I don't know. For some reason, I feel like they did away with that feature, but I'm not even sure if you can. I'm gonna give it a try. I can't return it. And so I tried to listen to it. I literally have listened to three minutes of it and I hate it. I hate it. Oh my God. 
Why would you do this to this book? This book is so good. The book is so good and the audiobook is not good. I mean, for me personally, that see it got a lot of great reviews on Audible, but like, oh my gosh, this audiobook is not for me. Also, I'm trying to do my little swatch thing and I think I have to use a different size needle because it's not working. What is going on? I need to physically read that. I need to physically read that book. That audiobook is just not Elizabeth Evans, okay? Elizabeth Evans is just the best narrator ever. She's so good. Okay, I have my color palette. Could I have made this way more cute? Absolutely, but whatever. So, burgundy, fantasy romance. Magenta, contemporary romance, regular romance. Green, sci-fi. Blue, mystery thriller. Beige, this taupe color, nonfiction. Mustard, literary fiction. Fantasy, kind of this like pretty dark brown. And then a new month is signaled by this beige color. And then around the entire outside of the whole border is gonna be this like whitish cream. Also, I did some math and I figured out how big I have to make each of the rows. You no, know, you really use it or you lose it. Like I am so bad at math now, um, but I made my little swatch of like what it's going to look like. And I really like it. And I figured out I'm going to do five rows for each number so and then the sarah j mass books i'm gonna do a combo of these three colors because i realized i can't do two I'm struggling through this audiobook it's not not chill i'm gonna start my blanket yay <laughs> my battery's gonna die in like literally two seconds but I just have to get this uh, I have to tell you something well first of all I have started and I'm officially two rows in took me a little while at first to figure out where to put my stitches but I think it actually looks pretty good right now second thing I listened to Brittany Brosey's podcast for the most part while I was doing that tried to switch to the audiobook oh my god oh my god Currently, someone is screaming because someone they know died, okay? And this is how this narrator is depicting someone screaming for their dead relative. My brother! My brother! You think someone's screaming for their dead relative like that? This audiobook, awful. I will not be getting the second one. To me, it's unlistenable. I feel like to most people, they could probably get through it and be fine with it. And if you're not like really picky about audiobook narrators, you're probably fine with this narrator. It's like when you go from listening to freaking Elizabeth Evans or anyone who does like Harry Potter, like all of the incredible audiobooks, and then you go to this, it's like, okay, it's not quite as bad as A Court of Silver Flames' audiobook, but it's pretty close, okay? It's, it's here's Court of Silver Flames audiobook. This one's about right here, okay? It was a waste of a credit. It was a waste of a credit. I am trying to power through and listen to it because I want to crochet so bad, but like I genuinely cannot listen to this audiobook. Why do they sound like they are in a healthcare commercial? Like, no! This is so bad. It's so bad. I need to switch to physical reading because it's ruining my reading experience of this book. Okay, bye. genre blanket update look at that look at that I have done like seven rows now it probably takes a solid 15 minutes or so to do an entire row because this thing is huge this color is 
this marks January, and then this is the first book I read this year, which was a nonfiction book. Um, and I already really like how the colors are playing together. I'm already really loving it! My only problem is that when I start doing this, I tend to black out for like an hour and just like crochet, crochet, crochet. It's like my mind turns off. And then I am just the whole time, which is super fun, except for the fact that I'm not loving the audiobook. It's gotten better since yesterday and since this afternoon. Like I can listen to it now without getting super annoyed, but I mean, I still am really annoyed. She says the love interest name, his name is Rain, and she says his name like Rain. And I'm like, stop whining when you're saying his name. It's really annoying. It's really, 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 really annoying me. But I don't know, I've just kind of put up with it because I just, all I wanna do is crochet. So I'm just going with it. I'm this far. And I have book club in less than 48 hours. Kind of forked on that one, um, but it's fine. I'm really, 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 really enjoying it though. Like truly, really enjoying it. I don't think it's five stars. I think it's gonna be a four, but I'm really loving it. Where we're at now is that Aurea has now met the love interest. And like, obviously we know he's a love interest right off the bat. He's the most gorgeous person he's ever, she's ever seen. He's like hot, tall, dark, and handsome with beautiful black wings. Like, of course it's love interest. And his name is Rain. And he's not as mysterious as I feel like our main character love interest typically are. He's just giving easy neutral vibes. Like I don't feel super swung one way or another on whether or not I like him or not. He's not super sassy, he's not super quippy, but he's fine, I guess. I don't hate him, but I don't love him. Same goes with the main character herself. I feel like Honestly, she's another one of those characters that so far I'm feeling she doesn't have a personality. Like she's just kind of a vessel for us to like live this romance through. It's giving very Violet Soren Gale to me. Really, 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 really want this main character to show us a little bit of personality, which is why I think I'm feeling not a five star at this current moment. But the one thing, the saving grace of this whole book, the plot is freaking amazing. I'm also really enjoying like the general fantasy world that we're into between like the different house of shadow house of night all that kind of stuff we really know nothing about the world like i feel like i'm 140 pages in and i feel like i genuinely other than the fact that there are different houses and that there's like beef between the reishi and the hiaj vampires other than the fact that there's beef between them I know nothing about this world, which is also kind of exciting because I feel like there's a lot to build upon at that point. The other cool thing about this is that, so the whole thing is kind of taking place in this moon palace. They are required to be in the moon palace during daylight hours. Once it turns nighttime, they can leave, but everyone is required to like stay in this palace. Our main character, Aurea, has essentially teamed up with Rain and another female character, Misha, who I really like Misha. She's pretty fun and cute and whatever. But we're kind of getting the dynamic between all the different players right now. And that's really great as well. It's not just like only we're focusing on the romance. We're barely even focusing on the romance in the first place. They just basically hate each other's guts right now, which love a good enemies to lovers. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm not head over heels for it. Can't tell honestly if that's partly due to the audiobook ick that I got. I really genuinely don't think this is a five star, at least right now, maybe it will be. I just like, Dude, after coming off of Sarah J Mass, nothing compares, okay? The fact that her Sarah J Mass's characters are so poignant in my head. Like I know their personalities, they feel like real to me. And then I'm reading a book like this where I'm, it's genuinely like not bad. I just feel like the characters are not very well fleshed out and they kind of just seem like placeholders at the current moment. Do you get what I mean? Like, it's not like they're really not pulling me one way or another with personalities, except, you know, you have your main character woman, you have your main character love interest, and then, and then you have a random enemy and you have the best friend. It's like, we're just getting, I just feel like they're standard tropes right now, which I don't mind. Like, I'm fine with it, but like, girl, there's no getting over Nesta Archeron for me, okay? <laughs> you give me a Nesta Archeron, I'm hooked. I think my bar is just set really high now after coming off Sarah J Mass. So my plan for the rest of the evening, I honestly think I'm done crocheting because I basically just black out every time I do this. And I need to read this book with my own eyes because that audiobook narration is really taking a toll. I will give you guys an update probably tomorrow. Other than that, see you in the next clip. What is up? What is good, people? I'm halfway through.
okay? Just maybe just under halfway through. The biggest thought that I have that I haven't shared yet is like, why am I feeling like this dynamic between our main character, Aurea, and her adoptive father, Vincent, is a little too surface level. I don't even know if surface level is the right word. It just doesn't feel like a deep parental relationship. Does that make sense? It feels more of like a mentee mentor relationship to me. And I honestly can't tell if it's because she calls her father by his first name, her adopted father by his first name, Vincent. I don't wanna like pass judgment on that, but it almost makes it feel a little bit more platonic and like he's not actually her father, if that makes sense. I just feel like there isn't as much of a, a parental connection between these two. Does that make sense? And I'm not trying to like say you should or should not call an adoptive parent by mom or dad or whatever, but she does call him her father. If she's not using his first name when she's talking to someone, she will say, oh yeah, my father is blah, blah, blah. But then she calls him Vincent. It's just different, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Other than that, uh, plot is moving, moving, moving. We have not slowed down with the plot, which I am obsessed with. Also, I looked up the fan art. The fan art's great. The fan art for Rain, amazing. I feel like the other thing that I, I do, I am enjoying about this world is that we don't really know a lot about the world yet. I think I've mentioned this before, but it's it seems to be starting to open up a little bit more too. I think that there's rebel activity going on right now and kind of think we're being uh, shielded from what these rebels are actually, their motivations are and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued as to where it's gonna go. No, the plot is moving though. Like things are happening, things are at stake. We are continuing to get one of these competitions like every 50 pages or so, which is awesome. It just keeps you moving. It keeps you reading. I'm not getting five star feels like I said before I'm not feeling like a super big connection to the main character and I'm not falling head over heels for our boy rain and that might be partly due to the fact that the narrator calls him rain I mean that's a little dramatized but she literally says rain why rain like stop stop being so whiny I have gotten a little bit over my dislike for the narrator I mean it's not perfect by any means, but I have learned to deal with it. I have learned to accept it. My goal for this evening, I need to not do this because this is taking away from my reading time, unless I wanna to listen to the audiobook. Oh my gosh, you guys, it looks so good. Like, not to brag, but like, look, that's a freaking pro. My plan tonight is literally, I'm just gonna go read. It's like 50 degrees outside right now. And I think I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna put a jacket on and go outside and sit outside and read my book. I have a stomach ache for some reason. I kind of hate that, but check in with you guys later. I have to finish this book tonight because tomorrow's gonna be a really busy day at work. And then I have book club tomorrow night and we must, we must finish this or else I'm gonna be shamed by my book club. We don't want that to happen, do we? Okay, I'll see you guys in the next clip. Bye. I finished it literally an hour before book club starts. Man, did I procrastinate that to the last minute. Literally just finished it and I powered through with the audiobook um, over the past two days. Also, wait, before we get into the little mini review I have, crocheting and listening to an audiobook might be my new favorite hobby. I was so in tune with my crocheting, yet at the same time, completely, clearly understanding everything this audiobook had to offer at a 1.8 speed. And that's perfect. Okay. That was literal perfection. Hold on. I need to go grab my genre blanket because I've made some progress and it looks sweet. Okay. Okay. Let me show you. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? The, like this section here, this is the start of January. This is a nonfiction book. And then this means Sarah J Mass. So this was the first Sarah J Mass book I read. I have another row of, or I have another six rows of this one to go for Sarah J Mass. And then I have another tan one again. So I don't know, I have quite a bit to crochet so far. And now I just finished another book. So now I can add on to this, but I am literally in love with it so far. It's so cute. It's so soft. And I'm just so, I'm just so excited to have like something that I 
actually made with my own two hands. I'm obsessed with it. This is like the best hobby ever and I'm so glad I have tried it out. Let's talk about Serpent in the Wings of Night. Overall, my rating is a 3.5. I think I'm sticking with that. I was debating between a 3 and a 3.5, but I think I actually really liked the plot a lot more than I had anticipated to. Truly, this is a mixture of Hunger Games and Twilight. There were just a few different times where they would say something and then I would just be like, you're incredibly fast and incredibly strong or whatever that line is. It was a lot of of um, <laughs> flashbacks to Twilight, I must say. Like I said, listen to the audiobook for probably 75% of this book. Audiobook was not my favorite audiobook. I think, and it's not that the narrator did a bad job. She genuinely didn't do a bad job. She just has a really annoying voice to me. And I continued to get thoroughly annoyed. Like the way that she said the main character's name, Rain, every single time she said it was Rain, 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 Rain. And when you hear that 6,000 times, you just want to turn it off, okay? It just, you start going crazy. She also said wings, like wings. Really, really annoys me. And I'm just glad I'm done with the audiobook, to be honest with you. That's not a knock on the book. That's just like the narrator was really effing annoying to me. The second thing that I didn't like love about the book is that there were phrases that kept being reused over and over and over again that Rain would say to Aurea. So he he kept saying, there she is. Like, I think that was said at least 30 times in the book. Her face would like turn more serious or like she would get into this really intense zone or something when she's fighting or whatever. And he would go, there she is. And that's like cute once or twice. But when it's happening every 10, 15 pages, it's just like, that's enough. The other thing, saying that I was really annoyed at was he called her princess and that really effing annoyed me. <laughs> and in serious conversations, he would call her princess. Like that's not how you do that princess. It just seemed kind of patronizing to me and really annoyed me. Like the romance was fine. I, I, I thought it was good. And I liked how there wasn't like an overwhelming amount of smut in here. It was more heavily fantasy based and a lot of like the tension to the lead up of the romance rather than just like, romance, 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 like smut, 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 smut. So I liked the more fantasy elements of it. I really liked the competition. I thought that was a really engaging plot line and storyline. I don't know. I felt like I didn't get enough of a deep dive into the fantasy world of this book. They touched on it quite a bit, but I felt like I almost needed more world building with this book. Like I needed more backstory. Essentially, like there's a few different houses, like the House of Night, House of Blood, House of Shadow. I think honestly I can't remember but like I just felt like I needed more backstory and I didn't feel like the world was necessarily as well fleshed out as it could have been the other thing that I thought was kind of strange that it had knocked some points for me is Aurea's relationship with her father or her adopted father Vincent I feel like I was trying to explain this yesterday about why I wasn't loving it and why it felt almost like surface level and I don't even think it was surface level they literally said it in the book it almost felt like he was more more of her captor. He was like holding her prisoner <laughs> and like forcing her to do things. And it just like was a really weird dynamic and almost like a forced relationship. I don't, I don't know. It felt really strange to me. And it felt like she was his prisoner sometimes, <laughs> which is not something to laugh about. Okay. It's weird AF. And I think that that's why I didn't like it. Like she always called him Vincent. It was never her father. It didn't feel like a father daughter relationship. It literally felt Felt like Vincent was using her specifically to an end. I, I think there were maybe some moments where he, you felt a little bit more like he loved her truly, but it really felt like he was using her for a means to an end. I think the strongest thing was the plot line though. The plot line really carried this. I did enjoy the writing, except the fact that it got a quite redundant at times. And then the other thing that I started to really annoy me too is that she would say words, like repeat a word three times. Like she would say blood, 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 or tight, 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 or God's, God's, God. Like, you know, like it would be a word and she would repeat it three times. And I just kept picking up on it throughout the book. And then that started to annoy me too. Again, I listened to the audiobook, was really annoyed at the narrator. I'm not sure how much this is dinging my rating because I was just annoyed with the audio book. Even if I had read it physically, I do still think I stand by the 3.5 rating. I don't know. Maybe I would have given it a four, but I really, it's definitely not a five star for me. I really feel like it's a 3.5 four star for me. Am I going to go on to the next book? I don't know. <laughs>
I'm gonna maybe I'll see reviews. I'm not convinced that I want to go on to the next book. I, like I didn't dislike it. I just thought it was fine. Let me know what you think if you've read this. I do think though, and I know I just filmed and put up this video. This would be a good book for people who are just starting to get into fantasy romance. If this is the first book that you pick up that is a fantasy romance, I think that it could probably get you into the genre more. I felt like it was predictable when I was reading it. I was just like, I just know what's gonna happen and what I had predicted did happen. So I wasn't throwing any curveballs. So yeah, I don't know. 3.5, not bad, not knocked my socks off. That's my review for Serpent in the Wings of Night. Glad I read it questionable as if to, I'm going to move on to the next one. You know, I didn't finish Assassin's Blade because I had just been listening to Serpent in the Wings of Night. And I don't feel like I need to finish Assassin's Blade in this vlog. You know, I already love it. I mean, I read two books in this. I started my genre blanket. I would say this is a pretty successful vlog. Now, my next task is to go make some bean dip for book club, which is in an hour. Until then, leave a food item in the comments below. Just leave a food item because I gotta go cook some food. I hope you guys enjoy this vlog and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night wherever you are. I love vlogging. Okay, I love vlogging and I'm excited to be back and hopefully I'll be like weekly vlogging now. I don't know. It takes a long time to edit vlogs, but whatever. I need to end this. Okay, I love you. Thank you for being here and peace and love. Bye.